Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. And I'm Jesse Sanford. And we're going to bring you your entertainment headlines in quick time. Jesse, what's going on in TV and movies? Well, I'm glad you asked. Stranger Things plans to resume filming, actually. Yeah, it's been a while since we've heard anything from Stranger Things. The last season kind of ended up on a cliffhanger. There's, yeah. there's been a teaser trailer put out, but it's been quiet for months. Yeah, well, pandemic, right? <laughs> that's That's the word of the day. But you know what? Um, the pandemic actually helped the creators iron out the show, and it sounds like it's actually going to be longer than anticipated. Oh, wow. Which, yeah, can't complain about that. I guess there is a silver lining to this tragedy. Um, yeah, so they're not going to be in Kansas anymore. It looks like in season four, it's set to take place outside of Hawkins. But um, I think there's a Russian component to it. Yeah. And, you know, I was looking into it. And I shouldn't have been surprised that there's going to be a Russian component because it was uh, the only other language it comes in other than English is Russian. Ooh. Yeah, the first episode of the new season is going to be called The Hellfire Club. And I, I, it's such a good show and it's October now. You should just go binge watch it if you haven't seen it. Yeah, it's uh, one of those shows that uh, it brings back the 80s. That's, that's yeah. a big thing. And, it you know, it kind of tickles that... Uh, 80s movie, kind of Monster of the Week, kids on bike uh, type genre. I don't yeah. know how to explain <laughs> it, but they just mash a whole bunch of stuff together and it works. Yeah, and it, Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 93% and on IMD it's got 8.8. That's good. So, yeah, you can't argue with that. Um, but yeah, coming this year we've got the Crude sequel. It's trending on YouTube today and it's already got, it was, I think the trailer was released yesterday or something like that. And it's got 14 million views already. Oh, uh, that's uh, kind of amazing. I mean, the Crudes came out like 10 years ago. Quite a while ago now. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a great comedy for kids and this time they're challenged by a rival family. Can they pull off the Shrek 2 though? No. Well, the crew. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, I'm sorry, you can't be Shrek no, 2. No, you can't be Shrek 2. So yeah, there we go. I, uh, based on the trailer though, I give it two and a half Shreks out of four. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's going to release on November 25th. So look out for that. Is that going to be streaming or coming out on video? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's coming out on streaming. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. Good question. Good question. Um, speaking of... Of Stranger Things, though, Miley Brown was in a new movie called Enola Holmes. Yes, she was. It uh, came out on Netflix. It's got The Witcher in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, it looked really good. And it's got a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes. And it got uh, 6.7 uh, on IMDb. But honestly, I couldn't finish it. No? No. Um, Couldn't I'm make it to the end, hey? I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it. Um, my girlfriend, she loved it, uh, but I, f I found it to be a little ham-fisted. The imagery was kind of uh, a little too on the nose. And that, and uh, Sherlock Holmes, he was a little bit too soft for me. Well, you're not the only one who said that. Apparently, Sir Conan Doyle's estate agrees with you. Yes. They actually filed a lawsuit against the show. Because um, he, Sherlock only appears to be that soft in the original series on the like last 10 books or something like that. And um, yeah, that's not public domain. Nope. And it isn't as interesting in my opinion. Apparently they're going to make a spinoff of this spinoff. That, that's crazy because Enola Holmes is a spinoff of Sherlock Holmes, but they want to make a Sherlock Holmes spinoff. From Enola Holmes. So, like, that's that's like if you took Fraser and did a spinoff from Fraser of Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> I actually wouldn't – I actually kind of want to see that, especially now. But it's going to be a little bit, bit different if – well, it wouldn't be different, would it? If it was a reboot of Cheers based off – of a spinoff of the old Frasier. <laughs> yeah. Try not to think about it. Too I'm going cross-eyed just yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Um, I really think that Miley Brown did a good job. I don't think it was her fault. 
Yeah, it was good to see her like uh, – when she played, uh, what's her character name? Eleven on Stranger Things. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When she plays Eleven, she's kind of like robotic, emotionless, which is hard to do. Oh yeah. And with this one, she's more outgoing, so it's, it shows her her range in in acting. That's for sure. Yeah, I'm really excited to see what she does in the next five years. Honestly, she she's like she's 16. She's done more in her life than I have. <laughs> Let's not think about that one too far too much. <laughs> But yeah, on this day, as of filming, it's October 1st, uh, Media Man is being filmed. But the Comedy Network actually premiered on this day in 1992. That's, uh, wow, that's really going back there. Yeah. Um, and being October, the, che- the, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre premiered in, Aust- in Austin, Texas in 1974. Yeah, it's a classic one. Have you seen it? Uh, I've seen one of the newer ones, oh, okay. but I haven't see, actually taken the time to sit down and watch like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is apparently it's got some really great special effects. It's a, it's a classic. Yeah. But, um, something a little more classic is Night of the Living Dead. And that actually premiered on this day as well. Well, this is and a big day for October. Big day for October. Yeah. That was 1968. Yeah. Have you seen that one? I personally haven't seen that one. Oh, see, see, we both have to do some watching, I think, because the original uh, black and white yeah. Night of the Living Dead, pretty fantastic. It's, I, I heard it's very influential. It is. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll see like a lot of horror tropes kind of be birthed there. Wow. At least for zombie films. And, I mean, it's October. You should be watching zombie films anyway, right? You should be. <laughs> and I should be, too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And Whoopi Goldberg got married on this day in 1994. But that's all I've got for you, Michael. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break, and I'm going to tell you about some video game news right after this. Why did I mention Whoopi Goldberg? Because <laughs> <laughs> cool. why not? <laughs> yep. People need to hear about her. When was the last time you heard her? Well, it was... I guess she has got a show here. Yeah. It was a soft way to enter the break. You could call it a Whoopi Cushion. Media Minute, your headlines and quick times. I'm Jesse Sanford. And I'm Michael Forward. And Mike's going to talk to us a little bit about video games. And of course, we mentioned before the break that it's October and we talked about zombies and Night of the Living Dead. Well, mm-hmm. one of the big zombie properties out there now is The Walking Dead. Yeah. And recently released for the uh, PC Oculus Rift and the uh, PlayStation VR systems is The Walking Dead Onslaught. It's a zombie-themed arcade shooter with the characters from the TV and comic series. Wow. Yeah, you have uh, Norman Reedus playing his role from the series in the video game. There's uh, two modes. There's a story campaign, which will run you about five hours. And there's a uh, supply run mode, which is you can play it infinitely. And you got to go in and grab as much loot as you can before the zombies get you. Wow. You know, arcade shooters are kind of having a comeback right now since VR has been a thing. Well, the VR system, you're kind of limited on how you can do player movement. Because uh, if you do it too much, it kind of makes people sick. So they have to kind of work around that. I've played some of the early VR shooters. Um, One of the ones for the original Vive, you could move around with the thumbsticks. Holy crap, I almost fell over. <laughs> yeah. It's way easier to teleport or just be in a rail shooter. Well, uh, this one, it's uh, kind of doing lukewarm in terms of uh, Metacritic. It's 67. And 
you know, this is kind of the second uh, VR Walking Dead game that's been put out recently because they had one out earlier, I think this year called Saints and Sinners, but that didn't have kind of the characters from the Walking Dead series. Okay. Well, I think the fact that there isn't a whole lot of VR right now, like people don't, you, you, you won't go next door and your, and your buddy isn't going to say, oh yeah, I've got this VR system. I think that contributes to the score a little bit. It could be. And uh, I don't know, maybe people are starting to get a little bit tired of The Walking Dead. It's been going for such a long time. Yeah, I mean, truth be told, I never actually got into it myself. But the, um, there was some games they made for The Walking Dead. Yeah, there's been a few. What was that game where it's like... Are you thinking about the Telltale game? The Telltale game. That yeah. that one was fantastic. That was. I, good. I actually recommend if you haven't played the Telltale Walking Dead game, do it. Yeah. Because it's a great narrative, and they did some amazing things. Yeah, Too, I didn't watch the Walking Dead, but I loved the Telltale game. Yeah. Too bad that company doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> what? Yeah, they went under like two years ago. You know what? That's not fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's life. That's life. Speaking of life, let's talk about a life of crime with Mafia Definitive Edition. All right. All right. That's this, how Mafia works. That's how Mafia works. <laughs> it's from uh, Hangar uh, 13. It's coming out for the PS4, PC, and Xbox One. And it's a remake of the 2002 Mafia. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and they've built everything from the ground up. Uh, you take the role of cab driver Tommy Angelo as he's thrust into the world of a Prohibition gang era life. And they didn't just, like, remake it. They remade it with an expanded story and gameplay. So if you played the original, there's new stuff to do if you buy this new edition. Wow. How is it doing? Uh, it's doing 76 on Metacritic, which is, I mean, that's a good Metacritic score. But I think we've established that. Well, yeah. That and um, when you reboot a game like that and you add a bunch of new features and story... It can get risky, and the fact that it's doing good really gives me some really good hope. I'm going to have to pick that up. And it seems like over the last few weeks, we've been talking a lot about, like, remakes. So yep. a lot of companies are now going back to these older properties and bringing them to the new systems, which I like to see because... I love it, too. Some of those old properties uh, are pretty great, and to see them just kind of die out, sad. That is sad. We need it. We need more reboots like this. For sure. Well, this one's not a reboot, but it's a uh, sequel, Port Royale 4 from Gaming Mind Studio. It's coming out for the PS4, PC, and Xbox One. You get to take control of a colony in the Caribbean in the 17th century, where you get to grow a small settlement into a trading city. Now, 17th century, Caribbean, where am I going with this? Pirates? Pirates, yes. Yeah! Yeah, they got pirates and privateers, and uh, apparently for this new Port Royale game, there's a new turn-based naval battle system with up to eight ships, so you can get your cannons done. All right. Yeah. Now, what happens to ships when they sink? They go under. They do. Yeah. And you know what else goes under? Telltale Games? <laughs> well, it's a tech company, and yes... Tech companies do go over. In fact, Going Under coming out for the PS4, PC, Switch, and Xbox One got released this week by Agro Crab. Now, when I say roguelike, what do you think? You think kind of fantasy dungeons, right? Yeah, um, there was a slime game. Yep. But this one, it's an office crawler in what? instead of a dungeon crawler. Is it, is it 2D as well? It, yeah, it's got that classic like isometric uh, Diablo-esque uh, view. Which, uh, you know, you've seen a lot of roguelikes. And you explore the ruins of failed tech startups. Yes. It's got a great, colorful, uh, vibrant graphics. And basically, you play an intern, and you're tasked with clearing out the dungeons of failed tech startups. And your weapons are office supplies, like brooms, pens, guitars, and giant staplers. Yes. Yeah, that one's, I'm not sure if I mentioned, 75 on Metacritic. So people are kind of liking that. I they better. <laughs> yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> now it's time for us to get serious. Serious Sam 4 <gasps> is now out for the PC and Stadia from uh, Core Team. It's actually a prequel to the uh, classic FPS series. And really? Serious Sam, you know it's known for you take on hordes of monsters and with a whole bunch of weapons. Here's the thing though. A lot of people saying it's like the older games. Nothing really new to see here. 
So 68 on Metacritic so far. The is, Are the graphics up to The graphics are up to date. Well, yeah. there, you, there you go. You know, it's been years since I even thought of Serious Sam. And I loved that game. Yeah. I'm, instead of picking up uh, or trying to somehow get the first game. I'm probably just going to have to pick up this one. Yeah, the consensus is if you like the older Series Sam games, then you should like this one. You know what? Speaking of older games, there's uh, the, yeah, speaking of older games that need a reboot, I got to say, have you ever played Wolfenstein Enemy Territory? Yes, I have. That needs a reboot. There is not, there isn't anything like it on the market anymore. I think the closest we ever got to recreating the glory of that was, uh, Call of Duty, yeah, was that the World War II Call of Duty? Where it had the There's game? a lot of Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, nobody's really captured the scale of their uh, conquests. So hopefully, maybe yeah. uh, we can see that one day. Now, just a couple of uh, pieces of gaming news. Uh, of course, a big property that's coming out, it's been delayed already, but uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is due out in a few weeks. Oh. Now, the thing is, uh, the company behind it, CD Projekt Red, who also did The Witcher, because we mentioned The Witcher earlier, mm -hmm. they promised last year that they wouldn't put their employees under crunch, which means, you know, we're working like 24 hours a day yeah. to try to get the game out. That's uh, the game. They reneged on that, though. The company is asking its employees to work six days a week now, the lead up to the launch. But... I mean, you can see it. If they're trying to get it out for a launch date, it's been delayed already. Yeah. Then there you go. Well, it sounds like they... As long as they, they, as long as they compensate the employees. Yeah. But, I've, I've worked six days a week several times. Yeah. But it sounds like their employees got the option to get it done. Yeah. And uh, it, just, it sounds like they just weren't able to. So you got to do what you got to do. And this one, I'm not... A big uh, Smash Brothers fan, but they announced a new character for Smash Brothers. Oh. Guess who it is? It's not a Pokemon. Nope. And it's not a Fire Emblem character. Nope. Um, I don't know. What if I told you it was Minecraft Steve? No way. Yep, they're bringing Minecraft Steve to the, the Smash Brothers game. You know what? That actually kind of makes sense. Along with the <laughs> zombie and Enderman, I think. Really? Yeah. I'm playing the Enderman because I've been playing the Villager lately. I'm kind of uh, an Ike slash Lucario main, um, but it was really cool to see Villager in it. So I can only imagine that they're going to do the Minecraft character as well, too. For sure. Well, that wraps up this edition of Media Minute. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we're actually taking a little hiatus, but we'll be back again in about a month. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Jesse Sanford. Have a great one. Smash that like button.